Hello and welcome to your in-depth weekly horoscope for week commencing the 6th of January for your Sun or your Ascendant. If you've yet to subscribe to my channel, I'd be honoured if you did so now. Of course, this is a blockbuster week. We have Saturn and Pluto coming together from Monday and they're going to be in the same position, 22 degrees Capricorn, through to the following Wednesday. They exactly come to conjunction on Sunday the 12th. Now this has received a lot of publicity and therefore it has been arousing a lot of interest. If we think that Saturn is the ruling planet of Capricorn and therefore it's uh, in its dignity in this, uh, in this sign and also Pluto is the planet of change but also of what's hidden and deep and dark but Capricorn energy itself is quite traditional. We may see some institutions some notable public figures, uh, some situations where power and orthodoxy have been used to uh, maintain a degree of control, these could be challenged. I think what's much more likely to happen, and with this week's lunar eclipse, annular lunar eclipse on Friday, is that we're just getting a push, a nod, uh, towards the more emotional energies of Cancer, trying to balance out the more material energies of Capricorn. This energy has been going on for some while since last year's solar eclipse in July. So I think although this week is going to be critically important, I think it's going to be much more nuanced than people might think. I mean one of the things that's happening this week is the fact that Mars in uh, the go-getting sign of Sagittarius is in a quincunx with Uranus. Now this is fascinating. Uranus is in the fixed sign of Taurus and Mars is in the more mutable free-flowing sign of Sagittarius. So it's possible for example when it comes to our financial resources that we may actually want to kick back about being more cautious which is Capricorn energy is encouraging us to be. But the Sun is in a tight conjunction with Mercury all through this week and they are also along with, uh, with uh, the rather uh, more nurturing energies of Ceres, they are angling towards Neptune, which is about a more sensitive, compassionate and feeling side of our natures. It too is in its home zone of uh, Pisces. So I feel that although there can be something around the basic uh, plates and at the basis of our existence that does start to shift, I think it really is going to be once Jupiter and Saturn, Saturn initially and then Jupiter uh, latterly this coming year, move into Aquarius and Pluto arrives in Aquarius in 2023, that we're really going to see the new world order emerge. But there's no doubt about it that there could be some kind of structural correction going on when it comes to resources financial markets and all that kind of stuff. It is entirely possible. However, I think in a more personal context, Venus actually forges quite a potent link, a semi-sextile with Pluto and Saturn. So this could be a time with Venus in the more enlightened uh, sign of Aquarius, which is very much about people and relating, that we do get some signals about how we need to work collectively to protect our resources. And I think this Capricorn in energy is a lot to do with what's going on with environmental issues and about encouraging us all to think less about consumerism and more about conservation. That's how I see it. Another astrologer might see it entirely differently. But I did note, for example, that the governor of the Bank of England said that uh, pensions could be affected greatly by uh, the dying out of fossil fuels because so much money has been invested in those areas. So new technologies need to come along and Uranus is going to be priming those through a series of connections with uh, some lunations all through this year. So Uranus is going to be just as powerful as Jupiter, Saturn and Pluto. But certainly this is a fascinating point but the two, Saturn and Pluto, have been inching ever closer together for some months. They just reached that high point. And that Cancerian energy 
is just saying to us, don't forget our humanity by trying to main some, maintain things that are outdated or just traditional or have just always been that way, to keep being open-minded about the direction of travel for person kind. Your specific forecast, Gemini, is really quite fascinating because Mars, the planet of passion, is in your sector of relating. But Uranus, the planet of restlessness, is tucked away in a very psychological area. You could find yourself being almost a bit blunt with someone this week in a way which could be a little bit out of character for you. You're someone with a real uh, skill at talking to lots of different types of people. But the planets are calling out to you to embrace a much more soulful embrace of their influence. It's about getting in touch with what really moves you at a much deeper level, a much more profound level than perhaps you've ever experienced. And if there is somebody who's not on the programme that you're evolving or there is something that you feel intensely passionate about that someone is not listening to, it might not be that you're going to consciously confront them with how you feel. It may be hard just to not blurt it out. But with Venus, the planet of love and affection, in your sector of travel, if you are fortunate enough to be going somewhere on a business trip, it could be interesting because the lunar eclipse is emphasizing your resources, both your short-term resources, your longer-term resources. And also Jupiter, is continuing its journey through the sign of Capricorn, which can bring you some fortune this year, but I think it's going to be through transformation in some way. It's not just going to come at a material level. It's almost coming from you changing, and then new opportunities are going to emerge for you, and they can be very exciting, but they have to move you at a very deep level. If you'd like to know more about what 220 will hold for you as an individual based on your unique birth data, please see the link beneath this video. You can order your forecast and character analysis and get 30% off. But for now, good luck and goodbye. It's been a real pleasure being with you. If you'd like to go beyond your zodiac sign and discover what 2020 will hold for you based on your personal birth data of time, date and place of birth, please see the link beneath this video. You can get the rest of this year free and 30% off. But for now, good luck and goodbye.